Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about how I perfect bind books. Uh, there's a lot to talk about between the different types of perfect binding available, uh, papers, lamination, uh, there's all kinds of stuff to talk about. I am, it's going to be kind of all over the place because I'm not necessarily filming this in the order of the process. I'm just filming this conveniently for me. So before we can even start printing, we need to actually design a book and a cover on a computer. Uh, and there's, there's better ways and worse ways to do that. I mean, if you're going to have bleed, you need to include bleed on the cover and the text of an eighth of an inch. Um, let me show you how I make covers really quickly. Oh yeah, and uh, we use Adobe software for everything basically in pre-press and uh, in the creative side of things. Uh, if we have a vector image that we need to manipulate, that's gonna be done in Illustrator. If we have raster images that we need to work on, that's gonna be done in Photoshop. And then we're going to take those along with text and bring them into InDesign and create the actual files of the cover and book. And then from there we output a PDF and send that to the press. And for those of you who don't know, a raster image is a photograph, basically an image that is made up of lots of very small dots. And uh, uh, when you zoom into that, it gets blurry. Whereas a vector image is, uh, you know, like a font that is made up from points and lines and it doesn't matter how big or how little that is, it's still going to be crystal clear. Um, so that's, that's the difference between those two. Okay, so we have our InDesign open and if we do Command N, it's going to open up a new document for us. So... Uh, if we just do, you know, a typical letter-sized cover, actually, okay, so if we have an 8.5 by 11 book and uh, we need a cover for it, the cover needs to be 11 by 17, uh, and then plus the spine. To calculate the spine, what you're going to need to do is, well, for a 60-pound paper, you take the total page count, so let's say there's 234 pages. You divide that by 435, and that's going to give you 0.537. So let's round up to 0.54, and that is going to be the thickness of the spine. Uh, and what I do to quickly put the spine in there is I make this a two-column document, and you go ahead and put... 0.54 as the gutter, that's going to show up in the center gutter. Uh, the orientation needs to be landscape. Uh, I do include bleed on all my covers, whether or not I need it or not, and you'll see why in a second. I don't use any slug. Uh, so we go ahead and create that. So right there we have the cover. This is the spine uh, that's that I put in there, so that's automatically uh, set up and centered there, so 0.54, and here's your front cover, and there's your back cover here. Uh, and the, the other thing that I do for every cover is you, I just draw a little box here, and it's going to be 0.54, and I just drag that up. Uh, so it's within the bleed. So that line right there is going to show up on the printed covers. Uh, and that just helps out with who have, who's ever binding them uh, to uh, locate the spine. Uh, most books you can easily locate the spine, but sometimes it's a little trickier. Uh, and this is just makes it completely easy to figure that out. Um, so then once you design your cover, uh, you export it as a PDF. Uh, Command E is export. Uh, and you can also go up here to file, uh, export. We'll just put it out on the desktop here. Uh, you want to set this to Adobe PDF print. 
uh, say if you're going to open up a second one, I always do press quality. Uh, but then you have to go down in here and make sure that your crop and bleed is included because that's some information that you're going to want. And then you can open up the cover here and Acrobat and see what it would look like. Now I didn't design anything on here, uh, but you can see that my spine mark is in there. You'd have your front cover, your back cover, your spine, your bleed, your crops. It's all good to go and you just send that to press. Now if you're doing a the the interior pages or what I like to call the guts of an eight and a half by eleven book, uh, you'd make this eight and a half by eleven. The orientation would be portrait. Uh, click facing pages and that's going to put your fit your pages side by side so you can see the left and right uh, the left hand pages are always going to be an even number and the right hand pages should always be an odd number uh, let's see here um, so let's just make this a whoops 124 page oh, I forget what I said I made the spine to be, but anyways, it's one column. The gutter setting isn't going to matter here. As far as margins go for a book, it's really personal preference, but I strongly recommend that the inside margin has more margin than the top, outside, and bottom. And that's just to keep your text out of the gutter. So let's add an extra quarter inch on the inside. Actually, let's do a quarter inch all the way and do an inch on the inside. I would say at minimum you'd want an eighth of an inch more on your gutter. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to have bleed, uh, if you're going to include bleed. So let's create that. So here's our book then. Uh, zoom out here. So you can see that the inside gutter here uh, has just a little bit more. It has that extra quarter of an inch and that's so your text doesn't get lost in the center here. Uh, when this is perfect bound you're going to lose a little bit of that. Um, so you want to keep everything out a little bit more. Uh, but this sets your, your book up uh, so you have left and right pages. Uh, I could go into a, a lot more detail here as far as you know insert uh, a marker um, of uh, a page marker, but actually, I mean, an InDesign tutorial you can already look up on YouTube. So, okay, once we make a PDF, I transfer it over to this PC here because that's where my imposition is. So, I open up an Acrobat and I use a program called PDF Snake to impose. Unfortunately, I heard that's no longer available, but it's great. Uh, so, I have presets in here. Uh, this is an 8.5 by 11. And we're printing it two up on 11 and a quarter by 17 and a half. I hit OK. It'll impose that two up with an eighth of an inch trim on the top and a quarter inch gutter and a quarter inch over on this side. Uh, so this sheet just needs to get cut in half before it goes into the perfect binder. Uh, first page, the last page, it's all good to go. And then I just go to print and I send it to the Konica 1200 and again in there if I hit properties I have preset uh, right there two up short grain I just load that up hit OK and print it okay so I started printing these covers on the 1070 here this cover is getting printed on a 12 point C1S paper now that means that it is coated on one side and not the other side. I use a Tango digital 12 point C1S. It's 235 GSM and they're 1913. That means the grain direction is in the short direction here. And that's to help it fold around the book uh, and uh, reduce any type of cracking that would happen at the spine. So this is coated on the front side, it has a gloss coating on this side, and the back side is uncoated. The uncoated side is uncoated because 
uncoated paper will absorb adhesive easier than a coated sheet. Now the adhesive I use is specially formulated for a gloss or uncoated paper, so it doesn't really matter, but basically all the Perfect Bind books I do, I use a C1S paper. One of the reasons that I use a 12 point instead of a 10 point is because it just creates a little more body to the cover. It's thicker, just a little more durable. Uh, downside is it's just slightly more expensive and the 12 point is also prone to curling a little quicker than a lightweight, a lighter weight 10 point. Uh, but I use 12 point for all my covers. So we could bind this cover onto the book as is without any type of coating on top. It's going to create more of a matte looking book cover. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, the downsize is you lose the durability of a gloss laminate. And I laminate uh, most of my covers. It just depends what the customer is going to want. But a gloss laminate will make it glossy and make it durable. It's a little bit more expensive than a UV coating, but a UV coating uh, doesn't last near as long. Uh, man, that stuff stinks. So I do lamination for pretty much all my covers. So most books, uh, even six by nine and some large five and a half by eight and a half books, I will print one up on that 13 by 19. If for some reason I can fit two up, I do do that as well. Uh, I have a 1319 grain long paper here for that. Alrighty, covers are finished. Now we're going to use uh, the DNK laminator to uh, laminate. I use a 1.5 mil film. Uh, it's 12 and a half inches wide by 6,000 feet when I put it on here, and it covers. Uh, the whole sheet except for a quarter inch on either side and that allows the knife to come through here and cut. Um, as far as if you're interested in what pressure settings I'm using here, I have 50 pounds of pressure uh, on the nip rollers here that squeeze it. Uh, then I put 45 pounds on the pull roller which is back here and pulls it through and the mandrel brake and turnaround roller I run as little as I can because I don't want to... If you, if you turn the brake on, which is right here, uh, what you're going to do is create tension and that's going to really curl your paper. You want to laminate it as relaxed as possible so that it lays flat. And we're running at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. I put two scrap pieces on the bottom because they stay in the machine after all the laminating is finished. So we're all up to temp, load it up. Uh, all we need to do is home the feeder and move it up. Then turn our air on. We need to disengage the drive and then jog it forward to the sheet that's in there. Once it gets there, we engage the drive, close the nip, start the laminator, turn the knife on, and we're off to the races. I also forgot to mention you need to put in the sheet length. That's the length from the front to the back. And all that does is tell the knife when to go across. It's all timed out so that when the seam comes up, the knife comes across and cuts. So everything looks good. We can speed this up quite a bit. I usually don't go too terribly fast just because I'm not really in that much of a hurry. It runs by itself. so. So just briefly how this works is it takes the film uh, and the, the adhesive side is out 
this roller here is heated and is pressed down on the paper. Then it comes through here. This roller right here is a decurler roller. And that decurls it. And then right here it's cut apart and then they're done. And you want your cover to be pretty flat when it comes out. I like to give it a little bit of a down curl so then when uh, it, it becomes acclimated to the temperature and the humidity, um, then it'll straighten out a little bit. I also forgot to mention this is super stick film, meaning that it's specially made. The adhesive is extra aggressive for toner-based printing. Okay, once I have it sent back here, it's real easy. We just recall, I sent it the folder two in here. It's gonna be the last file. We just print a hundred of them and we're good. So this is getting printed on uh, 11 and a quarter by 17 and a half, 70 pound. It's a short grain. That's about all there is to, to printing uh, the guts of the book. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about paper and cutting that down uh, in a bit. So this press will print to the edge of the sheet and you can see our crop marks here. These will all get cut in half once and then that'll let trim on three sides there and three sides here. This all looks good. Whenever I print out the first book, I make sure that it's the right file. Uh, is make sure that all the corrections are made that needs to be made. And also look for issues that are either coming from the press, uh, unwanted lines or artifact, print quality problems, but also problems that could happen in the rip where you have transparencies and screens getting applied where they shouldn't. So I like to take a good bit of time and go through it and just make sure it is visually as good as it gets. So again, this is 70 pound text. It is 17 and a half by 22 and a half, uh, and the grain direction is long. I'm gonna cut it directly in half uh, it's going to become a short grain sheet, and that's what we're going to print on. Um, it's Williamsburg, if you're interested in that. Uh, it runs real nice. I have no problems at all running this stuff. And my, my trimming is designed specifically. I know it's kind of an odd sheet size to run 11 and a quarter by 17 and a half through your press. You have to set it up as a custom sheet, but it saves a ton of time because you're just going to cut all these once and then all the final trimming gets done by a machine. Uh, it just minimizes the amount of cuts, and if you save time, you save money. It's all about efficiency. There's so much room for activities here now. Typically, this is right up here, and I stack books on here to be bound, and then bind them. I'm waiting for cover material for these books, so, that's kind of handy about this. It's on wheels. I can just move it out of the way and keep moving on the other books since I have covers for them done, ready to roll. Um, and it's nice. I can just stack my books here and bind them. So let's trim some books down and I'll show you how I perfect bind. Next, we need to get our covers ready for binding. So every single cover that I bind has a 1 8 inch overlap beyond the edge of the text book block. On this book, 
we have an eighth of an inch uh, between the trim and the edge of the sheet. And I want an additional eighth of an inch from the book cover. So that means from the trim on the top, I need an extra quarter of an inch and an extra quarter of an inch on the bottom. Uh, and that is going to align that crop mark directly with the crop mark of the text. And I usually just take a, a pencil and mark it. And it's a good idea to put a magnetic pad on there whenever you're cutting anything that uh, is gloss laminated. Um, not extremely necessary, but it's just a good precaution. Now this is a CP Borg 3002 Perfect Binder. Uh, it's a, the old Perfect Binder I had was a 3001, a little bit more manual. Uh, but this is a great machine uh, and it's fabulous because it's in line with the three knife trimmer. For many years, uh, we trimmed down by going back to the guillotine and manually trimming the three sides of the book. It's a great way to get started with a very low entry uh, piece of equipment, but as you grow, this literally cuts the time in half because after you drop it, the book block into the binder, the next time you touch the book, it's done and ready to be boxed up and sent out the door. It's a huge time saver. Okay, it's telling me that the waste bin is full, so before we get started, I gotta empty these out real simple. Uh, the back one will fill up quicker because pretty much all my trims are a quarter inch on the back and an eighth on the top and bottom. But each side has the trim, which is the side of a book, Whoa. Uh, as it comes through here. Setup is super simple. Uh, what we have to do is go in here to job. We're doing an eight and a half by 11 book. Press enter and send. Now we're done. This right here is actually a cooling tower and it gives it the adhesive just, I don't know if it takes a minute till it gets to the top of that, just for that adhesive to uh, cure a little bit more and, uh, and become more solid. So that's the cooling tower. I forgot to mention that this is a Challenge CMT 330 three knife trimmer. Challenge makes some good stuff. So let's take a look inside here and just break the different parts down. Right here is the book carriage and we'll take our unbound book block and put it in there. Uh, there's a vibrating table on the bottom that jogs all the paper, brings it all to the bottom. It will then clamp. It'll go past the nipping knives here and the, there are notching knives. There's one right here that they will put notches in the whole book spine and that allows the adhesive to get absorbed up in there and create a stronger spine of the book. Uh, then we have the glue pot here that applies glue. And then uh, over here is the cover nipping. Uh, Covers get piled up here, get pulled in, uh, they'll get scored. There's a scoring mechanism here that will provide the hinge score and also a score on the spine. If you're doing book flaps, uh, you can score that as well. Uh, there's pressure from the bottom and pressure from the sides that gets applied. And we can change all of that in the settings here. 
the amount of pressure, the amount of glue, the amount of vibrating, the amount of uh, cut that the nipping knives take, uh, and then the length of time that it holds the book before it drops it. So then it'll drop it out and it'll go through the three knife trimmer. There's adjustments here, and uh, this adjusts the skew of the book cover and also the lateral movement left and right here of the book cover. Since I always keep an eighth of an inch and I make sure it's trimmed down correctly, basically never have to adjust this. Uh, so I just load covers and uh, set up the length of the cover right here. So this number here is the length of the sheet, which it's a 1319 sheet. And then this number right here is the length from the spine to the edge of the sheet. So those are the only two numbers that we need to put in there and our first book should be sellable. this to crimp in a little bit tighter. But the alignment's good. The amount of glue is good. It's not too much, not too little. So let's uh, do a couple of small adjustments here. Okay, so I want to move the cover back just a little bit and increase the side pressure and I think it should be good. That's pretty good, that's lined right up. Let's keep them moving. So this is the, the adhesive that I use. It's called Techno Melt Adhesive. Uh, it comes in a pellet form and then uh, it just melts in here. I think it's at, uh, what am I melting that at? I have it set at 284 degrees Fahrenheit. That's called an EVA hot melt glue. There's actually multiple ways you could do a perfect bound book. You have EVA hot melt like I have here, or you could do a PUR, polyurethane reactive, uh, or you could do a combination of that and a sewn book. Uh, which will lay a lot flatter, where the signatures are actually sewn together and then glued. Uh, so there's plenty of options out there. Uh, the most commonly used one is probably EVA hot melt. Uh, the PUR is a little bit uh, more durable and will just stick to gloss papers a lot easier. Uh, it takes longer for that to cure. Um, there's a bunch of pros and cons uh, between the two. I don't know that I'm educated enough to actually deliver that to you at this point, uh, but EVA hot melt works great for me. You can adjust the amount of grind. If there were signatures and you wanted to grind off the bottom of them, uh, I typically run it at 0.02. I just feel like it, it creates a little bit more of a roughness. I do need to go in there and measure my notching blades and make sure they're sharp too. I haven't done that in a little while. Um, I also didn't mention this, you can adjust uh, where your nipping, uh, your side nip comes in to one side or the other, and then you can adjust glue film. This also has a side glue uh, that will apply glue on the edge of the book block. I rarely use that though, I don't, I don't really like it, um, I think that's just a personal preference. Uh, and you can also... Uh, adjust the speed. So right now it's on turtle mode and you can see like this is the bottom of the book block after it gets milled. Uh, it slowly moves it across so there's a lot more grooves and uh, it slows your machine down which is a bummer but 
uh, it will produce a stronger bind. There's more adhesive in there, but you could change that to rabbit mode and it goes quickly across uh, and there's just less uh, grinds. I might play with that one way or the other. Um, what other adjustments? You can, you can change the orientation like right now I'm binding it so the books come out with the cover side up. You know, you could change it so that it comes out with the back cover up. I tend to do it this way just because uh, if there were any mark, marks created by the conveyor system, it would be on the back cover, not the front cover. Uh, so when the binder's set up and ready to run, uh, I hit this three times. And what that does, it'll automatically start feeding the next cover. Uh, before I put a book in, that speeds it up. So you can see there's already a cover in there that's ready to go. The nice thing too about this machine is there's a book per hour meter here that changes as you're running. Uh, usually I can expect between two to 300 books an hour when it's running. But trust me, there's much faster, larger machines out there that are gonna do, you know, three to 5,000 an hour or so. This is just a little baby. Well, I gotta quit messing around and get back to work. Got a lot of books to bind here. Uh, I guarantee you I missed things. Uh, I'm sorry, I just kinda uh, went as I go here. So if you have questions, make sure you leave those below in the comments. Or if you're watching this and you have a little bit of wisdom that you'd like to share with everybody else, make sure you leave that down there as well. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. We'll catch you on the next one.